Sharon Bandanak originally started out to become a fashion illustrator and soon discovered a passion for working with natural fibers. After I graduated and I painted a couple portraits for a lady and that wasn't a lot of fun because she said I didn't get her dog's eyes right and I uh, my husband came home with a spinning wheel and I thought that looks like fun and I'll learn how to spin but couldn't find spinning lessons so I took weaving lessons and that was it I found my niche well I, I enjoy the process of weaving I enjoy starting seeing seeing the white yarn and uh, being able to control the color and how, how it goes together. And I, I just like to look at things and I interpret, I interpret them in terms of a weaving. And how could I, how could I do this in yarn? And I feel like a, a perpetual student and I'm the teacher giving me the challenge and seeing, seeing how it will come through. Well, my husband, for one, has always encouraged me when I, when I would get upset with something and I said, I think I'll get rid of my looms. And say, are you sure? And I, I think he was afraid he'd have to entertain me if I couldn't entertain myself. But he's been really great. My family is, is great in encouraging me. Um, my friends, my neighbors, they're all, and my, my teachers along the way were very encouraging. In fact, I ran into, when we came back to Lincoln, I ran into my junior high school art teacher, and she made me really feel good because she had remembered me and remembered my work and was glad to see that I was still involved in working with art. A figurative sculptor, Aisha Harrison relocated from Washington State to Lincoln. Basically when you make art, everything else disappears. Your whole, everything goes away. And so um, even when you're making, like right now I make very conceptual work, but um, while I'm actually in the act of making it, I, my brain is in this other space, and I'm very interested in that, um, in having that space in my life, because it uh, makes my, it just, everything flows from that place for me. So um, I guess I found that kernel, and then I sort of danced around the kernel for a long time. I had a sort of a life-changing event. I had my gallbladder taken out, and it was sort of this realization, like, what are you doing? You gotta do what you love, and you're not. So, you know, I just, I thought, I thought being an artist was um, selfish and impossible, and could ne you could never, you know, make it. So, I just decided it wasn't what I wanted, but, after, you know, you just can't deny that, those things, you know. You have to just do what you love and what you, um, what calls to you. <laughs> I mean, I think my mom, of course, is um, the beginning of it all because she took me everywhere with her and didn't hold back um, as far as what was available to me to make. Uh, artists like Yoko Ono, her work, especially the work cut piece, um, have been extremely inspirational to me in thinking about what art can do. Um, and then my professors here have been uh, amazing. I think Eddie Dominguez is one of the most profound <laughs> people um, for me to help me think about work and what I, how, how my work and my life are connected.
Byron Anway was recently awarded Oldest Hairstyle by friends of the UNL Art Department. His discipline is painting, and he's currently working on his MFA at UNL. Well, I had a solo show at uh, this girl Angel's Gallery um, at the beginning of March, and that went great. And she named the gallery a Latin word, which I can't pronounce. It's S P. Or, uh, yeah, S-P-A-T-I-V-M, and I think it's like spatium, um, but it says it on the door and, and it, made me, it made it so hard for me to promote this show because it's at a gallery, I know where it is, you know, but I, I didn't know how to say the word, it's embarrassing. Um, but I, you know, the really great thing about the Lincoln Arts community is the first Friday walk and the fact that I didn't publicize my show and I had 600 people show up. One of the, the best things about Lincoln is how young the arts community is. I mean, and it's not that there aren't people of all ages involved, which, you know, there really are. Um, but, the, but the best thing is everyone all dressed up in their cool artsy looking clothes, marching around the different galleries, and you know, the feeling that there's something going on. There's, you know, the feeling that something's exciting. And, you know, maybe you won't even see it, maybe you'll miss it, you know, maybe you'll just hear about it. Um, you know, but the possibility that the next gallery might have something that would be really, really amazing is there. And, and, and the feeling that you're a part of something. You know, that there's these other people going and, you know, walking and looking in the galleries and talking about the work. Um, it's maybe, it's probably the first time I've really been a part of that. You need people that, you know, are going to be supportive and smile and say that you still have to do what you have to do whether or not there are daunting tasks ahead and so my mom was really great about um, you know <laughs> listening to me blather about how well, I'm not good enough or I'll never make it you know because you know we make the lives that we make you know and then I guess uh, Aaron Holtz in the painting department uh, was really critical in helping me go from being some rather hyper excited kid who didn't know what he was doing to helping me calm down and make paintings instead of making these, I don't know, disjointed masses. <laughs> so I think he's been really critical.